Excel project one, as you know from your reading of the project, and if you haven't read the instructions for the project yet, stop this video. You gotta read the project instructions first. It would make this video just so long, so I'm not gonna go over the instructions. But you notice there was a file that had solutions in it, and it was a PDF, and it contained this and what the answer will be. So this is the answer. You wanna create your file and you want it to look like this. Now look, I am going to go through here and I'm going to do, I'm going to press control squiggly. That is the key above the tab key and it's going to reveal formulas. So I'll show you what that looks like in a second, but it has to be done with formulas. Okay. Um, my way of doing things is going to be very close. Let's just go ahead and look at how I do mine. So as you can tell right away, mine's in a table. That other, the solutions could be in a table. I honestly don't remember anymore, um, but I left mine in a table looking format. We could have changed the table design and, you know, made it look so there's just this really different colors, right? Plain, right? We could have done that. So I don't see these, so I don't think I did, but I like to use a table for your information. And for this one right here, I've already organized it by al alphabetically, which is the way the report needs to be. A lot of files open. See, this alphabetical. The text file that you're given is not alphabetical. So when you get the text file, you'll copy it. You know, control C and then V, whatever you want to do, copy it and get it into here. So before you paste into your Excel file, you've copied already. Go to Paste Special, select Text, and hit OK. It will copy the text file into Excel in columns by doing it that way. So, purpose of that exercise is a lot of times your data is not Excel ready, and you got to get it ready. So you got to clean it, scrub it, make it make it ready for Excel. So that's an example. So you learn how to do that now. So right here in this column right here i gotta go back to blue there we go so in this column right here we don't think we really need it but the solutions had it and i want to show you something really cool so this column is um let's do this this column is net 30 net 15 net 30 and right here i have this the third the discount days right so excel is so smart it will let you split the net and the 30 up. Actually, I could do this. All right, so you got 30, 30, 30, 15, 15, 30, right? So right here, hovered over 30 where I typed it. I can do Control E. And it'll just pull out of this column or array the numbers. The discount days, 15s are here and 30s are here. So you can see, and I didn't do anything with type 30 once and then control E. So again, it was control E and I am experimenting. I've never done net on this particular table before. We'll control E, see if it does net all the way through. It, it did the words, 210 net, net, net. Pretty cool, huh? I don't need those columns, I already have them. So I'm gonna get rid of them. All right, so I have days outstanding. We need that so we can do the aging report. I got another column here. And the reason I did it right before I made the video, it, after a while, the Excel will get rid of, because it's in the table, the formula. And when I lose a formula, uh, I, you know, I wanted, I wanted just to have it real fast to make a quicker video. So what you do is you type in equal dated if, equal dated if, parentheses, you highlight, now what also, before I go any further on the formula, I, I created a current date formula because the date of this project, the date of this report is 6-30-2018. And I totally, I've been using, I haven't updated this in so long. I am so sorry. I just realized it's 2023. It says 2018. So I'll, I'll update it in a future course. Apologies. That would make a better project, I think, if we kept the date more current, right? But anyway, so... um. So what we'll do is with dated if, parentheses, put your cursor here, comma, put your cursor here, comma, and then type ask, um, um, quotation mark, D quotation mark, 
in parentheses. Actually, I think I did uh, invoice date then current date. I don't know if it matters, the order. Um, I think I've done it both ways and it works fine. And what you've done is you said, Excel, if there is a difference, dated if, if there is a difference between these two dates, give me the number of days, give me the difference in days, lowercase d, right there. Okay, so that's the reason for the formula. And you see right here, there was no difference, so it popped out of zero. No difference here, so it popped out of zero. Okay, let me get rid of that column because I only need one of them. Dates out. Now, OS is days outstanding. I used to work for a lender, so OS is days outstanding. And yes, 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 there was outstanding aging reports. All right, so this next column requires some finagling. Okay, so uh, this invoice was given, terms, invoice date, and name of company, invoice number. I added this right here, this column, 30 days outstanding, and all these columns until the invoice amount. So, in the current column, that means it's not due. It's not one day due, one day past this due date, and equal to 30 days. It is less than one day. So what you do is you do equals if, parentheses, if the day is outstanding, put your cursor here, is less than one, less than one right there, comma, we want you to do the invoice amount. If it is not less than one, quotation mark, the little dash thing that's above your um, plus on your numeric keypad or the little dash is next to your equal sign on the regular part of the keypad, quotation mark in parentheses. And obviously this one fits that criteria. Zero days outstanding. This means it's less than one, which is zero. I guess I could have done equal to zero. I didn't think about it. Y'all can try it if you want. I mean, I don't know if that works. Anyway, I guess that would work. Um, give me the invoice, and it did. The same thing for this one, and the same thing for that one. All right. So the current, and then 90 plus would be very similar. Let's look at the formula for that. Equals if, if the day's outstanding, you'll highlight that cell. Oh, by the way, because this is a table, when you do the first cell here, it automatically does the entire column. When you do the first cell here, it does the entire column. Okay, pretty cool. So if days outstanding are greater than 90, because this, this is equal to 90, and, and this one, 61 to 90. So this one is more than 90. It's greater than 90, comma, give me the invoice amount. That's the true. Comma, thoughts. Parenthesis, uh, quotation mark, dash, quotation mark, in parentheses. And you can tell that's greater than 90, greater than 90, and so on. All right, so I think current and 90 plus are super easy formulas. The ones in between are a little more complicated, okay? It's going to be what's called a nested if and function, nested if and function. So we'll have the equal if, and we'll also have an and. Let's look at that formula. If, parentheses, and parentheses, all right? So what you're telling Excel is this. If these two conditions are true, give me the invoice. If not, give me the dash, okay? So let's look at it. If days outstanding is greater or equal to one, which is the one to 30, comma, days outstanding is less than 31 because it's equal to 30, this has got to be 31, so it's got to be between these two numbers. That's how you get the 1 to 30. It's less than, I'm sorry, it's greater than 1, greater or equal to 1, sorry, less than 31. It has to be both. So, if and, and it is uh, greater or equal to 1 and less than 31, give me the invoice amount. If not, that's false, give me a dash. This is obviously greater than or equal to one and less than 31. So it's in that column, all right? Just for, um, let's look at the other one, the 31 to 60. If the day is outstanding, and it's got an end because we've got two commands. 
if it's greater than 30, right? So I can get 31. And less than or equal to 60, give me the invoice amount, comma, false. Give me a dash. All right. And there's your formula for the 61 to 90. I imagine there's a lot of videos, me and Paul's at these intersections here. All right. So after that, I go to I go to a pivot table, y'all. If I can do it with a pivot table, I will use a pivot table. All right. So I ran it twice. I was going to go over step by step with you guys and um, to create a pivot table. Let, yeah, let's do that. I'll tell you what, let's do that. All right, so to create a pivot table, you go to insert, pivot table, and I'm going to tell it to use this table. And I um, did not label it, so... I did not label it as a, um, wait. I messed up. The, um, I tell you what, guys, my screen capture recording software is interfering with my ability to run the mouse. So you highlight it, pivot table, and you tell it to print it right here. I think you can. So the solutions for me, you can just do it right here because we're going to do something else in a second. All right. All right. It's still looking for me to do the pivot table. Oh my goodness. All right. Uh, oh, there we go. All right. You know, normally you just click in the field and um, I get this pivot table field. And it wasn't giving it to me because I, I went partially into creating a pivot table and I bailed and um, it didn't like it. Um, when I use my screen capture software, oftentimes. Um, All right. So what you'll do is you'll put current here. You'll put um, one current one to 30, 30, 60 here. Make sure you change. It might default to count. Or it might default to some other setting, depend on what you've had in the past in your pivot table, or somebody else maybe was using this Excel program. So you want to change it from count or average to sum. So I got some current, some 130. I got them all here. And we can compare this to the solutions really fast if we wanted to, and they would match. So what I would want you to do, because I'm gonna stop the video in a minute and I'll pick up in part two. Um, get get this far see if you can get this far and then watch part two okay because these uh this part right here with the um nested if and functions can take a minute all right and then when you finish and you've got your pivot table looking like that watch part two this concludes part one